Well, I never thought I would live to see the day. <laughs> what am I talking about? I lived, I actually lived to see the day a politician said they got it wrong, rolled something back, and apologized. Did hell just freeze over? So remember last week I was telling you about the Ontario government just issued huge restrictions and we had, uh, we have a stay at home order which we've always had, but they closed playgrounds, they closed tennis courts, they closed basketball courts, they closed golf courses, they have checkpoints at the Ontario border now blocking people from traveling into the province if you're from another province. And the problem here in, in Ottawa is that we have two cities that are intermingled. They're basically, we're one big city. We're not two separate provinces with two separate cities. Many people who work in the Quebec side work in Ottawa. Many people in Ottawa work in Quebec. There's government buildings, federal government buildings on both sides. And we had, you know, 10 kilometer, so seven mile long traffic jams coming across the border just to go to work. Uh, and the same happened at night on the way back. And people were furious, including the mayors of the towns, by the way, saying that this doesn't make sense. Out of 30,000 cars that were going through that checkpoint, they turned away 15 that day, 15 cars. So you're telling me you're interrupting 30,000 different people to turn around 15 people in a city of a million and a half people, <laughs> if you count both sides. So yeah, um, but then the premier came out and actually apologized and said, oh, well, sorry, one other thing, we'll go into that right away. Um, before I, I say what he apologized for, he, uh, they also authorized special police, you know, enforcement rules where police could now stop a random person walking or a random person driving. No questions asked. You didn't need to have a, you know, some idea that that person's doing something wrong or anything. You could stop them at any time, ask them for proof of ID, where they're going. If the person is deemed to not be out essentially, you could be receiving an $800 fine. And if you uh, refuse to give information, you can get the fine or even be arrested. And a lot of people basically said, that's carding. And if you don't know what carding is, I'm sure you do, but Carding is when, ran when police officers would randomly stop people and ask them for ID. And um, in many places, the vast majority of people who get stopped are minorities. And that's been proven in different places. I'm not so sure that's proven here in Ottawa, for instance. Um, I've never heard too much objection to. I've heard objection to carding, but I've never heard of a lot of people claiming that's happening every day. It could be. I don't know. I just haven't heard it in the news. So, um, but a lot of people were upset over that, carding. Now, the government came out. Doug Ford is our premier in Ontario, and he actually said, uh, we're sorry, we acted too hastily, and it wasn't our intention to do some of these things. When they were talking about, you know, giving police powers to stop people, they were thinking, you know, people out driving at 10 o'clock at night when everything is closed, where are they going when they're supposed to be in a stay-at-home order? But this power gave people the right to stop people driving at, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon out for groceries. So it, it left it very, very open. 
So they pulled back on that. In fact, they pulled back because the police said, well, we're not going to do it. <laughs> the police said, yeah, that's overstretching. We're not enforcement bylaw officers. We're police officers. We're here to serve and protect. We're not here to carry out, you know, spot checks to make sure people are, that's, that's health officials, that's enforcement officers. That's not police officers. So they rolled that back. They also said, yeah, you know what, uh, maybe stopping 30,000 people, cars going across the border at rush hour in like Ottawa is a dumb idea. Um, maybe, maybe we should do that at times where it's not rush hour. So now there's going to be revolving times and spot check times where they're going to do it. So you can pretty much guarantee it's not going to be between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock in the morning. They're not going to stop you coming across. And uh, I have a friend who has going to school, lives in Quebec, has to go to school in Ontario. It's like a dentalist, a dental assistant. And boom, they uh, all of a sudden it's no, no problem. Just going in, going in, going in. It's much faster than it was. So that's, that's good. That's good to admit when you're wrong. Um, and you're... I understand the efforts, right? Don't get me wrong. I completely understand the efforts to try and stop people from gathering. And because right now our cases in Canada are skyrocketing. Cases even in Ottawa are higher than they've ever been before. Um, we're not overrun yet in our hospital or ICUs. We still only have around 30 some people in our ICU. And some of those are people from other cities that are coming here because they're so full. So we're stu still doing well that way. But the vaccines are very slow to roll out. There are uh, shortages all the time. Cases are on the rise. And I, I understand the need to stop the spread and mitigate people gathering. But inconveniencing people who are just driving to work is not the way to do it. Telling people they can't go to a park and go to a playground with your kids is not the way to do it. That the, the risk of spread is so minimal outdoors compared to anything indoors. So they have to crack down on other places. And they finally figured out that they're getting that a little bit more right. The first place I would think of is one of the busiest places you'll ever see right now is a fulfillment center at Amazon, right? Amazon is super busy. Their business has blown up even more than it was since this pandemic started. Everything else is locked down. Order it at Amazon. They'll, they'll drop it off at my door. So they have all these fulfillment centers and, and they just closed parts of the fulfillment center in Toronto in two different areas because there was not proper, you know, PPE protection and the, the employees were... There was cases that were spreading in the, in the plant. They actually closed them, and at least sections of them, and are also telling them how to better protect the employees that are there, better spread them out, better to do the job safely. And that's what they needed to do. They should have been doing that since day one. Big places with a lot of employees that can't work from home because you're fulfilling orders, so figure out the best way to keep everybody safe, and that's where you concentrate on. You don't concentrate on two kids in a tennis court hitting a ball 40 yards apart from each other. Is that really the most dangerous thing you can think of? Think of a tennis court. Uh, how many people have you ever seen in a huge tight area in a tennis court? Doesn't happen. Plus you're outdoors. So I mean, really what's the risk? Really, what's the risk? And if you're playing tennis with somebody, chances are they're your friend that you're probably seeing anyway. And if they're not outdoors playing tennis, they're at your house playing video games together. So, yeah, uh, it, it, you, you got to make the right decisions in the right places, right? Uh, there, there has been zero, zero facts come out that have shown the spread in outdoors other than weddings and parties there's never been a study that says oh yeah you know one percent of everybody who goes golfing gets no it that 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 doesn't happen there because there's nothing 
Uh, a lot of businesses have been closed, even though there's been no proof that there's been spread there, neither. But they just assume that because they're an indoor area, that the virus can spread in that area, even though there were no cases and no, no studies and nothing like that. But they closed them anyway. But I, to be honest, I never thought I would live to see the day where a politician actually comes out and apologizes. I mean, our Prime Minister of Canada has been found guilty of ethics violations three times and not once has he ever apologized. Ethics violations of a Prime Minister never once apologized. But our, at least one politician did and I'll still come down hard on them on their decisions that they've been making in some cases but you know what? At least somebody in government somewhere without getting caught on camera lying and you know something like that actually came out and just said you know what I think we got it wrong we're gonna pull back on it and we're sorry and in this day and age you just don't hear that so I'm gonna give credit where credit is due that was nice to hear